I have with me today a panel of NEOS core team members. You, you, you're not in the panel. <laughs> I, we, we wanted to do the talk with the experts. So, um, <coughs> Everybody knows that's, that's a joke. <laughs> You mean I did a mistake? Okay, that happens. Okay, so we have a few people here uh, interested in the talk with the core team talk. It's an experiment, so I would like to ask my panelists to the front. We have Christian Müller. <laughs> Welcome. One of our newest team members, Markus Günther. Carsten Dambekallens. <laughs> and last but not least, David Spiola. Have a seat. So, I have a microphone here for the panel. And I have <coughs> another one for your questions. So, does anyone already have a question for the core team? You're here for the other people's questions, right? <laughs> Any questions? Any questions you have? A, we wanted to try this format. So is there anything about a latest release, about a roadmap topic, something that's in development, a question you've pondered of for a long time? Hi, I saw the client evil thing the first time. Uh, is it interpreted by JavaScript or is it an evil expression? That, that is a simple question, I think, but... <laughs> 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 evil thing? What do you mean with the client evil thing? Uh, John uh, showed us the... Hmm, yeah, dirty tricks where you can uh, change the icon with client evil uh, who does? You know? <laughs> don't, uh, you don't know? I was in the room, but I guess I missed ah, okay, it okay. somehow. But, um, Not like a coffee yeah, it sounds it's, it's like a question coffee is, check. How is it interpreted? Is it interpreted by EEL or is it JavaScript? Was it a font awesome icon or what kind of icon you used? Sebastian knows the Sorry. You know the answer? I, it, took, it took me a while to understand what you mean, but yes, uh, this is uh, interpreted by JavaScript, pu purely. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so this is a feature we have in the, in the new UI as a kind of unplanned extensibility um, way. Um, you can uh, have JavaScript expressions uh, that you configure in your node type configuration. Um, that is triggered on property changes and you have access to the property so you can do dependent properties, for example, um, stuff like that, or change, in that case, change icons depending on uh, the content of properties. Um, small things like that, um, which, which are sometimes super helpful to have and um, we pondered if we want to create some kind of structured language for that, but figured it is, too early to do that with the UI, and we still want a way to have to have this functionality. So we got we went straight forward with implementing this in a way that you just have a scoped uh, scoped JavaScript expression that is uh, evaluated in the client. Okay, nice. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have another question. Hi. Um, I'm hearing all the time that the backend media module is going to be rewritten one day, and there are plans. Are there any concrete plans? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It, it's. It's a. 
I would say, um, in a state of constant refactoring, um, <laughs> more in more in the background currently. Uh, so the underlying um, mechanisms are being worked on and improved, um, and there are definitely ideas to rewrite it, um, which is partly tied to, or it, it, that, that breaks down to two things. Um, the, the way we handle backend modules in general, so because that's the part, I mean, you heard the, you know, don't do Fluid anymore, do AFX and stuff, and then you look into Neos and where do you see Fluid templates still um, in the backend modules. So that's, that's one thing um, where we might to might need to change things to be really f more flexible than we are, and we also don't have any real open up, uh, opened up API for backend modules so far, because we don't really believe that this is the way we want it to be. Um, so uh, there, there's certainly the idea in the room of, of putting that into, into React, just like the, the editing UI at some point. Um, I don't know how you know, concrete these, these plans are actually, maybe Robert or Christian can fill in. Um, but so, so that's one thing, the, the more the, the, the frame around all that. Um, and then you have the actual UI for editing stuff, um, where certainly also things are happening. In, in, I mean, you've seen the, 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 the tabs for the variants, which is not really the nicest UI you can imagine. Um, but it's more a, a question of, of polishing these things. So um, completely rewriting things, I mean, what would be... The, the immediate benefit, except that it is all new in Chinese. So, so we probably need some more reason behind that. But it, I mean, for the concrete steps? I mean, there is, there is actually a good reason to do that um, because um, there are many feature ideas that are floating around in the community, like uh, multi-actions, um, like multi-delete and multi-tag and whatnot. Um, those would be way easier to implement with a sensibly in implemented uh, front end uh, like React. Um, so I have some ideas. Um, as Carsten said, backend modules in general are kind of evil. They work, but they're kind of evil. So that, that is some part to look at. Um, but I uh, wanted to have a look at, at how it goes. And there is actually a first step done with 4.3. Um, the asset um, variant uh, tab that you saw in the keynote is React already. Um, so um, that, that was just a test balloon to see if, if it works out that way. It seems to do, so from that we can expand outward and try to rebuild the whole module in React and then add um, shiny new features on top. Um, one thing that is pretty important on that is that we actually need to do that pretty soon because we want to get rid of the old UI and the old UI is kind of tagged into all the backend modules that are in Neos by default. So if we throw that just away like it is now, we will have problems with the backend modules we have. So we need to have a look at that anyway. You want to add something? Yeah, um, and there are very concrete ideas to um, extend the, especially the variant tabs for uh, s certain editing modes. So, for example, that you can apply filters there and uh, adjust filters and have proper cropping and so on. Um, and I think, um, as you said, the point in time would be very good to ask for new features there, but also come with some funding for it, um, because. Actually, in, in the point of development, that would be perfect now. We are in the topic, um, and uh, we can do some um, API changes for the next version and so on. So otherwise, if you want to have bigger changes there, you need to wait until near 6, and that will take some time. Thank you very much. So if you have some customers and projects that would like a nicer and shinier backend, talk to them now and let us know. Or give us React developers. I mean, that's also fine, I guess. For the core team, yes, definitely. Contribute on that front. 
Any other questions? Hello, I'm Thomas from Compu Group Koblenz. Um, we are looking for a solution to get proof security uh, for legal instances. I know this is not uh, a good item with uh, developers to talk about legal things, but we need it. Is there any solution available or... Um, Yes, please. I, I would hand over to Carsten, but uh, I mean, f at least from my perspective, I would I would need a bit more explanation what exactly you you, you need. Yeah, yeah, I, I would I would um, kind of. I, as far as I understand, it's about um, making uh, or have have a have a securely stored revision of changes to the content for legal purposes, uh, as is common in in the in the. Uh, a pharmaceutical sector, for example, where you need to be able to prove what kind of information was on your website at any given point. Okay. Um, funny enough, we had this uh, topic yesterday. Um, and uh, I mean, there are a, a variety of ways you can do that right now. We have implemented some very, you might say, low tech solutions um, that are fine on a technical perspective or from a technical perspective um, where we um, uh, snapshot the, the, the visible content uh, whenever something is published and then version that in a Git uh, history. Um, if you combine that with uh, GPG signing, for example, it would become a question that is outside my scope of, of knowledge if that would be sufficient for, you know, uh, legal purposes, but it would be one way to do it. Um, and then uh, we had already looked into this issue a bit earlier um, for not legal purposes strictly, but more in the sense of can we undo things. Um, and we looked into the uh, backend event logging that we have. Um, there's this module, which is pretty basic, to be honest, but um, Internally, a lot of information that you would need uh, also to undo changes is available. It just there's no UI for this. So um, also from that uh, starting point, you could imagine to add some kind of, of time stamping and, and uh, signing of things to make this um, legally a viable solution to prove what was on the website and when things were changed and it, potentially by whom. Um, so there are ways to do that. None of that is built in right now. Um, and as I already heard yesterday from a few people, this is a topic that comes off, uh, up quite often, mostly not because of legal reasons, but because, you know, oh, what if people delete things on the website, the editors? And, and then there are various ways to say, OK, well, if that is a problem, then you just you know, restrict them, and they may not publish directly. And so this problem can be worked around. Um, and, and for everyone else, it seems to somehow, this problem seems to disappear. In the beginning of projects, it's often a hard requirement to be able to audit any changes. And then it somehow is never mentioned again. So, so far, we haven't had a client that really said, we need this. Um, but if you do, or if there are like two or three or four that need this, uh, it, it certainly would be possible to implement this in a generic enough way to put it um, into into the system. That would be my guess. I'd like to add to that that the new content repository, the event source content repository, will be a game changer in that regard, I think. I mean, this is not finished yet, but once it is, I think it's, it is exactly what you're looking for. Except you would still need to have it signed and timestamped and then checked by a lawyer if that is enough. I mean, there's always this, yeah, this is, I can technically prove that this hasn't been changed, but do the people in the court believe that? That would be, but that's a different story. <laughs> we, not, we might need a blockchain for that. Yeah. yeah. Send okay. us blockchain developers. Ro Robert wants to add, add his two cents. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Um, I think. The problem is that also the, the amount of information piles up a lot over time. So if you export the 
full state of your website every day um, or on every change and try to put that into PDF files and put into a document management system. That's too much data. But a creative way to do that could be to export everything as HTML, for example, and then commit that uh, to, to Git and have signed commits there because then you only actually need to store the difference um, and and that could be I, I think that could even be legally okay uh, technically to do and should be rather easy to implement. That's what we said. <laughs> yeah, we did that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Did that. I, I did that. Oh, <laughs> well, you, you did that. I don't know. But we we did it in our project. You know. <laughs> Thank you. What, what's typo list? <laughs> Does that answer your question? Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Hi there, I'm Flo from Wiswick. Uh, a question, if you look back uh, some years ago, uh, Neos has developed a lot, new features have been implemented. Uh, what would you do different if you look back uh, <laughs> and is there anything you uh, say is, has been the wrong way? That's all. Um, the layout property on the pages in the demo <laughs> side was a very bad idea. That's, your um, <laughs> that's, that's one of the easy things that I would say, well, I, that should have been done different. In terms of, of evolution of the project, not much. I think the there are a lot of things that come together that make this project work the way it does now that have um, have been important in I mean the way how it came to be and how it developed and and that's there are a lot of things that that happened in the exact right order I wouldn't know what to change there I wouldn't want to speed things up for example because I think the slowness in some parts has been part of has been an important part of, of making the project tick the way it does um, technically, well, I mean, we are learning every day, so there's, I mean, with my current knowledge, I would skip a few things, but, well, I wouldn't have that if I had skipped those steps, so, I don't know. Um, maybe placing the dimension switcher somewhere else, but... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, maybe Marcus, you have something to add from a yeah. new perspective? Um, I guess on the UI team, we would like to choose TypeScript earlier or adapt TypeScript earlier because we, Robert mentioned it, I guess. In, in Salzburg at the Sprint, we had this uh, discussion about old issues and it turns out that more than half of the issues has been prevented if we choose TypeScript earlier. So uh, I guess if you ask the UI guys, uh, TypeScript adoption should be earlier. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I think you can change much in hindsight, but actually many of our technology choices were at a point where there was no alternative. Like the Ember JS UI, there was no React to to do that in yet. So. It was a valid choice at the point in time, and then a better choice appeared. Uh, event sourcing is probably the same. I mean, we have we have dreamed of that since ages, but it it wasn't at the point like we weren't we weren't ready for that. Um, all the PSR stuff that we do right now, those standards exist since a while, but when we developed our standards, it was before they existed. So changing that takes naturally some time. So I guess we did. We did it the way we did it, and I, I wouldn't change much. I mean, we needed the learning experience, and the, the, the products we have now weren't available at that time. Yeah, it's difficult to say, actually. that I think that TypeScript is something that could have been done because it existed and yeah. it was available, but yeah. You, you, one, one tiny thing, um, because, I mean, usually, well, depending on whom you ask, but I think humans are like, in, in a way, um, optimistic, per se, um, and or naive. It might turn out to be the same thing. But um, I remember that we 
I mean, because when, when Robert mentioned the CIC disaster, may I call it like that, um, and, and, and Brexit in the same two sentences, it was like, okay, yeah, it, not, not that the Brexit hasn't been known before we came about this idea of the CIC, but then again, I remembered, no, we actually discussed it and we thought, okay, no, it, no, it can't be that bad. And, you know, even if they are no longer in the EU, it's still the CIC and the company form is still a great idea. Um, but that would be one thing in hindsight. Oh, yeah, yeah, Brexit's going to come. Okay. It will be a disaster. So that, we should have known that. So that's like, and, and, then, and then, of course, something that, that we now know, um, never ever assume that you can open a bank account in some other country just because you can order electronics from China for two euros, including shipping or something. It just doesn't work that way with banking. So, but, but yeah, the CIC in, in, in the UK, that was probably also not a very clever idea. But that's also quite in hindsight. Uh, re recent, yeah. recent uh, past. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Another question. Um, hi, Mark Roberts from Kamau here. Uh, so <clears throat> last time you talked about the whole new resource interface and that you can pull from sources and we're seeing lots of integrations there. Um, that are doing quite good things for the community and for the uses of, uh, usage of NEOS. Um, which kind of areas do you see maybe third-party integrations as being relevant to drive NEOS in the future? And where might you see, okay, that's kind of the boundary of where we want to stop and these other things do that better. So we really want to, to try and expand our ecosystem in, in that area. Um, I guess that uh, being seeing NEOS as a content hub is something that would be quite interesting for the future to have a strong API in that regard and uh, also uh, use the full potential of the dimension system to feed data or content to other systems like front-end rendering layers or something like that. I think that would be something quite nice to have in the future. Um, when it comes to, I mean, we actually were kind of related uh, to or, you know, involved with some people um, behind the decoupled CMS initiative um, that seemed to gain momentum for, for a while, but has slowed down a bit, but still, um, you know, sen have senseless CMS, yeah, that would... <laughs> That would be quite useless. No, headless CMSs, you know, this, this used to be one of these, yeah, this is going to be the future, and now it's like, well, but, but um, essentially it is kind of quite common nowadays. I mean, and Neos is well positioned in the sense of delivering content in whatever format, um, because you can just very easily render anything as JSON, for example. Um, one area where we are lacking is an API to put content in, um, which is also a point where, or we are currently at a point where we have a huge opportunity to change that. Um, because as Christian mentioned already, for the next version, we intend to um, remove the old UI, which frees us from a lot of code. But part of that code contains APIs that are, as far as I know, still used maybe through some loops by the, the new UI. So we would need to clean that up. And we've been talking about GraphQL um, as an interface to the content that is in NEOS. Um, and if that would be in place and work both ways for reading and writing, in addition to being able to render in any format that you like, um, that would be really opening up the system um, and, and make the idea of, of it being a content hub much more viable because you can then more easily put in content from various sources and then maybe use NEOS to um, amend that content or curate that content and then render it out again to, to, to uh, different channels. So that would also be a re huge opportunity for the project to um, become more useful and be easier to integrate. Um, yeah. Uh some 
parts of it you can already achieve. Uh, okay, writing content is not that easy, but uh, if you use Bastian's uh, package for GraphQL, you can use Neos as content uh, hub, actually. For instance, in, in my talk tomorrow, we use Gatsby JS to build static sites and consumes the content from Neos. So it works as a headless CMS, so I, I can install Neos on my local computer and uh, edit content and create pages, and then I just go to my CLI and say, Gatsby built, and then the static sites came out. So um, many things can actually be done. It's not part of the core, but you can do it with third-party uh, packages and so on, yeah. But it would be nice to have this also in the core, so. Um, for me, there's two things I would really like to see. One is, um, over the years, I have been in many projects that in some way touched e-commerce. So I currently don't see us implementing e-commerce features in Neos, but um, having more streamlined um, connections to uh, existing e-commerce systems could be could be a really nice thing for Neos. Um, and the second part is that we pushed a lot in terms of assets, as you said, but it's very focused on images. And I see for the future more features also in, in other um, types of, of assets like video content and audio content, maybe even at some point augmented reality content, stuff like that. So that, that would be the second interesting part for the future sometime. We do have time for one more question. Anyone have the last question? Yeah, thank you. Um, Lawrence, hello. Um, I have a question regarding APIs. I um, we have, for example, one project where we import a lot of data to Neos and create also create uh, later on editable nodes uh, through the import process. And this is all done in PHP, which works pretty well, of course, because Neos does have the APIs. But is there also a possibility? So when you, we're talking about streamlining APIs to have a, a right API to Neos, which uh, would allow us to do such tasks more easily. Um, well, it, it boils, I think it boils down a lot to um, documenting the recommended way to do or to, to write into the system in, a, in an efficient way. Um, because uh, also yesterday we had this question coming up and there is, I mean, there are ways to, to put data into the system uh, using a clean API that we have. It's just not very well documented obviously, or it's not obvious enough to, uh, to do it in these ways. And then if you, if you approach data imports in, in, a, in, a, in a too naive way, then you run into uh, trouble because you assume that things will just work, but they don't because you, know, you consume all your memory faster than you think and so on. So um, there are uh, ways, and there are also third-party packages that, that uh, provide you with some, some f you know, boilerplate or helper code to, to import data. So I don't know if that, if that answers your question, but um, I think that if, you, if, if, um, if I would, were tasked to create a really generic import API, I would reject the task probably because it's too much depending on what you actually are reading from and, and, and what kind of transformation you need to apply to put it into the system and in what way you want, need it, you, you want to store it actually in, in the system. So I think it, would, it is, well, there's a, a, a good enough way to write some custom import code um, and that's needed anyway because there's no, no silver bullet for importing, I guess. Thank you very much. Uh, something I would like to add uh, from a core team member perspective. Um, this little session that we had right now was, of course, a format we're, we're trying here at NeosCon. But anytime you have a question that you think uh, a core team member should answer, um, there you have a lot of possibilities to reach the core team. And as you hear right now, we are really eager to provide our perspectives 
uh, for example, on functionality that it may not be that well documented, but of course, in a discussion with a core team member, you can get the feedback that you need, and maybe you come to the conclusion, hey, that was really good, maybe you do the pull request to insert that wisdom into the documentation. So if you aren't yet aware of the channels you have available for that, the Neos Slack is a very easy tool to get in touch with the core team. Lots of channels for specific purposes. Um, just sign up for that at slack.neos.io and then you can you know, talk with the core team members, chat with them. There's always someone online. Um, there's the forum discuss.neos.io. We have a Zendesk inbox, even if that's not monitored daily, but usually you, you do get feedback after a few days um, at hello at neos.io. And of course, use the opportunities you have here at uh, Neos Conference to make a personal connection to the core team members. So they're normal people. I had the pleasure to experience that in the last few years. Um, so just talk to them and ask your questions and, you know, contribute a little bit and, and help us make NEOS a better system. We may not be average, but we are normal. Um, <laughs> there's one thing that I want to mention, um, because usually Slack is mentioned first when it comes to how can I get in touch with, the with, with any of the community and it's like, yeah, go to Slack or go to Discuss or something. I would like to, to kind of ask you to prefer discuss to Slack because it's more permanent. It's just not, you know, drowning. The answers are not drowned in, 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 in this un ever going, ongoing stream of questions. Um, it's more like, uh, it's, it's, you can put it in a category and it's easier to find and it's easier to add to something even later. Um, and it's more in the sense of being, it's, it's more open also than the Slack. Uh, channel or archives that we have. So, so please, if you have any questions or if you have explanations to things, if you have ideas uh, for features, um, anything, just prefer discuss to to uh, Slack. Thank you very much to the panel. We need to stop because the people are already streaming in. Thank you, David, Carsten, Christian, and Marcus. Thank you very much.